guys, my name is Bridget and today I'm going to be talking about Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, which is on BBC America on Saturdays at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. During this video, I'm going to be talking about the first episode, which aired last week, and I actually saw it for the first time at New York Comic Con. So at this point, I've seen it three times. I saw it at Comic Con, then I saw it when it aired, and then my mom and I watched it again so we could take notes and try and connect everything. And I sort of tried to. I'm going to be talking about this whole thing, this mess, during this video. So stay tuned to find out what that's all about. Today I just wanted to sort of discuss all of this connectedness with you guys because everything in this show is connected to each other. Like, on this paper, everything is connected to something. And I'm sure that it will become even more interconnected as the show goes on. And since I've been thinking about that, I was thinking about making one of those crime chart things, you know, in the shows where they like put up pieces of evidence, like put up pictures of people, and then they like connect them to different people and stuff with the string. I was thinking about doing that because I have a cork board, and that could be a fun project since I think I'm going to be discussing the next couple episodes with you guys as well because it's a really cool show and it's really interesting to see how everything does connect. And I can't wait to see more because we've only seen one episode. And I'm excited to find out how interconnected it becomes as the show goes on. Like, that's going to be even crazier. Because look at how messy this is already. And we've only seen one episode. One episode. And everything's already like this. Just imagine what we're going to be doing on the eighth episode. If you have not seen the show, I will give you a premise. Basically, there's this guy named Todd. And he works at a hotel. And he goes up to the floor. So there's a murder. And Todd opens the door and sees the murder. And... Then, some crazy things happen in his life. I mean, he's not doing so great. Life isn't going so swell for him. Uh, he's running out of money. He's pretty broke. And then this guy Dirk breaks into his apartment and just sort of his life goes crazy. And he keeps seeing corgis all over the place. And there's also a kitten involved. And just, you know, a bunch of stuff that seems sort of random, but uh, is all meant to be there and it's all going to connect in the end, supposedly. So, that's why I made this chart, because I'm excited to see how things connect. And I thought it would be cool to do this. And so I'm going to walk you guys through this, and if you have not seen the first episode, it's on BBC America's website, which I can link in the description for you guys. You can go check that out. Basically, you're going to be getting a rundown on the episode. So I'm supposing you have watched the episode so that you can discuss with me and let me know Oh, Bridget, you missed this in the episode. Down in the comments, be like, hey, this actually happened. And I'll be like, oh, oh my gosh, I didn't notice. I bet there are things I didn't pick up on, and you guys notice, and you're like, oh yeah. And I'm just like, mm. And I actually have not read the book. Surprisingly, considering I talk about books on my channel, I have not read the book. But watching the show makes me really want to read the book, so I'm probably going to be picking that up in the future. So let's get on with it. Just before I start, the second episode airs tonight at 9 o'clock. Let's dive right in because we have a lot to discuss because everything is connected, you guys. I put Todd in the middle because he seems like the main character, even though Dirk, he seems like the main character too. But So they're both sort of in the middle, but Todd's in the middle mainly. Todd loses his room key all the time, and that's going to come up in a second. He sees himself on the 18th floor, just like mysteriously as he's going up the elevator. He sees himself talking with someone, we don't know who, in this like fur coat thing. And he loses his job, he's broke, and he is the first person to see the murder in the penthouse. He is always going to be a person of interest to the police, because now he's connected to multiple bodies in multiple locations. Then he meets this guy, Dirk. Dirk Gently, the show's named after him. And Dirk thinks that Ty is going to be his assistant, because he's been to him as one of those. And Dirk is a holistic detective, which means he sees everything as connected. He doesn't look for clues. He finds patterns instead. And he's no longer with the CIA, supposedly. I don't know if that's a lie, it probably is. He says he's been trained by a ninja, but then he says that's a lie as well. So I'm assuming that all the CIA stuff is a lie. But I don't know, it could not be. And he breaks into Todd's apartment at the beginning. We know he stole the blue car that he's driving in with Todd, and he drives super fast. He is supposedly from England. Uh, my mom and I have sort of debated about this. We don't know, maybe he's an alien, because he seems sort of strange, and he's connected to the Rowdy Three, who we're gonna talk about in a second. So also at the end, he goes into this room, and he sets his stuff down and he has a gorilla mask and the cat, the black cat from the beginning, who's also connected to other stuff as well, that cat is all, all up in this. And the guy with the gorilla mask, he broke into the crime scene and took the cat and he had Todd's key. So I mean, must have bumped into each other before. That's, so that's connected to the murder with the bite marks on the ceiling and all over the place and there's some fire in there 
And there are four people dead, supposedly, in the murder. I don't know, because Patrick Spring seems to still be alive. There was a man torn in half, and there's all this crazy stuff happening in that murder room. And that all happened over the span of ten seconds, somehow. And that is connected to Patrick Spring, who hired Dirk Gently to investigate his death six weeks before it happened. He called Dirk on the morning of the attack. And it was after... I'm not really sure, because it seems like he called him afterwards, supposedly, because Dirk got there, and there are all the dead bodies, and he took the cat. So I don't know. Like, we didn't actually see him take the cat, but I'm, he has the cat. Logical assumption. That's him. So how did Patrick call him if he was dead? So I'm guessing that he's not actually dead? I don't know about that, though. He's an entrepreneur, fun fact, and he has a missing daughter, Lydia Spring. She's missing. She. We saw her towards the end of the episode in the house with the corgi man. There were six posters of her, and she was mentioned once on the TV. So that's seven times that we saw advertisings about her being missing throughout the show. And just sort of side note, we saw three corgis from the bus and one corgi in the hotel. And uh, Todd took the corgi home to where the tag said, and that's how he saw Lydia. And that was sort of him taking control of his life after Dirk was like, if you take control of your life, life, then interesting things will happen. And he sort of did take control of his life by doing that. So Lydia is also connected to this other girl named Farrah Black. Farrah Black is trapped in this room and she says she's going to save Lydia. Another thing is that there are two military guys sort of like stalking Dirk gently and their primary goal is to preserve and like protect Dirk. There's this really stupid guy. He's really funny. I love him. And he has a gun and he always says he has a shot. Even though the other guy keeps telling him that's not the purpose of their mission. Their mission is to protect the primary, which is Dirk. But the other guy is just like, I got a shot, I got a shot, I got a shot. The guy who always tries to get the shot, he's from Provisional because the other guy, the older guy, he couldn't get enough money to work the case without him. Though he just came from Provisional to help him. So he shoots and the bullet, like Todd bends down, the bullet goes like hits something, then it goes up through the ceiling and into this other room and hits this guy in the head. And we see this girl, she's on the bed, her name is Farrah Black because we saw her later with the missing persons people from the police. They were talking about her. Her name's Farrah Black. And so she's locked on on the bed, she's chained on the bed, and this guy who's guarding her and like keeping her captive just got shot, so she's alone then, and so she sort of unattaches herself from the bed, and then this other guy comes and like steps on the knife just as she's sort of waking up again, so I don't know who that guy is, because we didn't see him, but he's there, and she said that she was gonna save Lydia, so she obviously knows Lydia, they were probably held hostages together, I'm assuming, she said she's gonna save her, so that's connected as well, and so she and Lydia are both connected to Estevez and Zimmerfield, who is the eyebrow guy, Zimmerfield, and they're her missing person at the police, and they think the murder is connected to the missing people, which obviously it is, because Patrick Spring's daughter is missing and Patrick Spring was one of the people who was murdered. And they're investigating Todd, because Todd is a person of interest, he's been multiple crime scenes, you know? Estevez and Zimmerfield said, or they said at one point in the show, that it was like lightning had struck a building, but it wasn't on the rod, and people still have lightning rods, just so you know. They are also connected to Project Incubus, which is the Rowdy Three, because they were watching in the car and they're like, oh, there's Project Incubus, as they came. And I'm like, what? What's Project Incubus? I don't know, we're probably gonna find out more about that. Hopefully in today's episode. And so there's the Rowdy Three. There's four of them. One of them is Oscar Chow. I love him. He's great. They came and they wrecked Todd's apartment. They came for Dirk gently. And Dirk was really nervous about them. And he was like scared. He wanted to run away. He tried to hunt under the bed. It didn't work out. And they did something. Like they all stood over him. And stuff came out of Dirk into them. And like stuff came out of their mouth. And they were like shouting as well. That could be connected to the whole alien thing. Or maybe they were experimented on in Project Incubus. I don't know. It sounds like Incubator. Maybe like they, well, they like created people. I don't know. And so I was thinking maybe Maybe they took his soul. I don't know. He seems like still the same person. Maybe they took his energy or something and now he's weakened. I don't know. They are also connected Amanda Brodsman because she, she is Todd's sister and she has a disease called pararubulitis and that means you can't leave the house, which Dirk questions and I'm gonna get to that in a second. Basically is a nerve disease and it means she has very painful visions like the drumstick turning into a knife in her hand. The Rowdy Three are connected to Amanda because uh, one of the guys, he stole a photo of Amanda from Todd's house when they were wrecking it after they wrecked it and when they were leaving. And so, uh, more about Amanda, she has this disease that has been in their family for five generations, and Todd pays for her medicine because their parents are broke from Todd's treatments. Uh, she talks about how their Aunt Esther has the disease as well. She apparently had good and bad disease days. I don't know what that means. Maybe that means she had a ton of visions and she couldn't really get out of anything. And basically, the visions mean that she's always scared, so she stays in the house, and she has no friends because she stays in the house all the time. Was that Dirk asked Amanda, why are you staying in the house then? And she was like, oh, I don't really know. And so I think that's definitely going to be coming into play during the second episode 
episode because if you're told to stay in the house and you don't know why you're staying in the house, what's the purpose? You're gonna leave. And so I think she's gonna leave. She's probably gonna get with the Rowdy Three just because they have a photo of her. So they're gonna find her. She also is in a band with Todd. She's the drummer and Todd plays guitar. It was really funny when Dirk imagined himself playing the band with them. It was really cute. Also at the end, she calls Todd and Todd doesn't answer her. Todd had a heck of a day, so I mean that makes sense. But at the same time, it's like, hey, why aren't you answering your sister? I mean, she might need you because she has her disease. She's connected to the military guys as well. The two military guys, the shot guy and everything, they were at her house because they were tailing Dirk and Dirk was at her house. So that's all connected to Dirk and Dirk is connected to a bunch more people. So we're gonna go back to talking about him. He liked the squishy thing in Todd's house and that like squishy person thing and Project Incubus, the Rowdy Three, they have it now. Just saying. I don't know if that's relevant, but it could be. Dirk also found nothing supposedly in Todd's apartment and apparently nothing is connected somehow to the whole story because he was like, nothing is also connected. Dirk is also connected to this other guy who's a hacker and we don't really know much about them. So there's this hacker guy and he was hacking, he was being paid. He's apparently under a lot of pressure to get some stuff done. He's paid by this bald tattoo guy who's demanding this hacker guy to hurry. I don't know his name, so I'm just gonna call him hacker. He was thought to be Dirk by this assassin who comes and now he's the hostage from, for this assassin. But anyway, before we get to the assassin part, there's a bald tattoo guy who's demanding the hacker guy to, to hurry and the bald tattoo guy is killed by the assassin. Also connected to the bald tattoo guy is two more bald tattoo guys who we saw later on who also had tattoos obviously. It was the same tattoo on like the back of their head like right there. It's a weird place for a tattoo because you're never gonna see it. Everyone else is gonna see it. But anyway, they were asking about the kitten that Dirk has in his bag later on that we saw and this guy was like, where's the kitten? Oh my god. And then they killed Mr. Platius who's the hotel owner who we're gonna get to in a second. And they killed him with a bow. And I don't know if that's significant but it seems so. I didn't think so originally but there's a bow on my shirt here and so maybe that's gonna play a larger role in the whole thing. So back to the holistic assassin. She's an assassin. We don't know her name really either. She seems really crazy. Um, she killed the bald guy with a machete. So far on screen she has killed three people and she wants to kill Dirk. We do not know why but basically she also stopped for gas when she didn't need it in her car and the workers at the place were dead and she killed a guy with a gun and she killed this other guy and she stole food. She's never supposedly killed the wrong person even though she just goes around seemingly killing people at random but everyone is connected who she kills somehow. She said things mirror each other in life which is true and that was attached to so she told the hacker guy to get up on the car then the scene switched and we saw Dirk on the hood of the car sitting just the same way with Todd. She wants to kill Dirk for some reason that we do not know why, but they are both holistic people in their field, which is interesting. And so back to the bald guys killing Mr. Platius. Mr. Platius is the hotel owner. He's the one who sends Todd up to look at the penthouse floor. He's the manager, owner, whatever. Todd keeps asking him for this check because he needs the money to pay for his sister's treatment, but he doesn't have it, so he's like, can I get an advance? And the guy's like, we'll talk about it later. He fires Todd because he opens the door and sees the murdered people. And Todd's like, oh, well, can I get my money now? Because he gets a check for getting after getting fired. It's his last payment. And and he's like, no, because it happened today in the same day termination and they had a whole argument about it being the same day termination. That is also connected to Todd, obviously, but it is also connected to the man because there was this guy in a hotel room that he told Todd to go check on them. He's also in the hotel, so that's why he's connected to him. He was angry with this woman he charged out. We don't really know about him. I don't think he really matters, but he probably does in the end because that's how things work. Smallest things matter. And there's this hotel woman who the guy left was arguing with. Todd goes into the room and he talks to this lady. He sits with her nicely for a little bit and she's crying and sobbing and everything and she doesn't really have many clothes on. But anyway, she's crying and upset. Obviously, like she's broken up with this guy or whatever. And it turns out she is the newscaster who reads off the lottery ticket numbers for Todd's winning lottery ticket. And fun fact, I was tweeting about Dirk Gently while this whole thing was happening. And I was on like some of the cast's Twitter because I follow them because they're really cool. And so the guy who plays Dirk, Samuel Barnett, he's really cool. He's really great. Anyway, he was tweeting about Dirk Gently as well because some of the cast were live tweeting and I was following them on it. And he said, wait, was the lottery lady, the crying lady in the hotel room. And I was like, oh my god, I didn't notice this. I tweeted at him and I ha said, hashtag everything is connected, as you can see here. And Samuel Barnett retweeted my tweet and he liked it. And I was just like, oh my god. Gently just tweeted me. Like, I died. I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. He's great. Oh my gosh, I love him. So, that lady is connected to the lottery ticket, which is $10,000, and it was found outside the murder hotel room. And Todd took this piece of evidence from the scene, even though he wasn't supposed to. And Estevez and Zimmerfield were like, hey, did you take anything from the scene? He was like, nah. But he did. He took the lottery ticket. The numbers were 7, 4, 5, 15, 0, and 1. And that was connected because Dirk had just told him that money would no longer be a problem for him. He just wins 10 
$10,000. And he said, Dirk said that it might not always be earned, but he, the world will supply him with money. If he does work on this case, he's destined to work on this case. And then he suddenly wins the lottery with this money from this lottery ticket that he stole from the crime scene. Like he did, he stole it because he's not supposed to have it, but he does. And so that's connected to the murder as well. And I don't know if I'm reaching here, I might be, but it could happen. Lydia Spring was mentioned slash on posters, like advertised that she was missing seven times throughout the episode. So I don't know if that's connected to the lottery ticket or not. It could be possible that they are connected. And then Patrick Spring would also be connected because he was in the murder. So yeah, I don't know if that's connected to the lottery ticket. Like the first number was seven. I don't know if that has anything to do with her poster being shown seven times or shown that she is missing seven times throughout the whole episode. I don't know if that's a thing that is important for the whole plot line, but it could be. And then obviously the corgis are very important because they are shown like all the time in random time, it seems like, but they're probably not random. One more thing, because I have talked about almost everything on my list, except for Dorian. So Dorian is the guy who owns the apartment that Todd is living in, Todd is paying him, and, and Dorian wants his money. He wants the rent that Todd owes him. And Todd paid him the rent, and then he stole the rent back when he thought he would be too high to figure out that he had stolen the rent back. But he did, and he wrecked Todd's car. He sold drugs. We know that. The FBI had drug surveillance on Dorian. That was important, because the FBI was there when they were all charging in, and there were the three teams. There was the FBI, the police, and the military guys. They were all there watching the house together. Not together, but like in the same area. Dorian, he talked with Dirk about getting an apartment at the house and he talked about Todd's money because Todd owes him the money. Dirk was in the car with Todd and they were about to drive away. He was like, don't forget to tell him he needs to give me my money. He was freaking out. He went up, he was angry about the Rowdy Three trashing the apartment. He was like, you guys did something. What was that? Like, who are those people and everything? And the microwave went off and he shot the microwave and then it like hit some things and then he got shot in the head. So he died as well during this episode. He could also be connected to Amanda because the money that Todd stole back from him that was supposed to be for his rent is for Amanda. And I guess she could also, while we're at it, be connected to Mr. Platius, the hotel owner, because Todd wanted the money from him to give to Amanda for her disease. And that's why he needed all this money during it. And now he's broke, doesn't have any money. But I mean, he's got the lottery ticket money now. I don't know what's going to happen in this next episode. I think sharks are gonna become involved because there's a shark on my shirt here. So that's probably important. I'm the cat, we're probably gonna see it again. There's a light bulb. And there's also a little corgi, which is really cute. I love the corgis, they're really adorable and I really want one. So yes, that's all I have for you guys today talking about Dirk Gently. I'm super excited to see the next episode tonight. You guys should definitely tune in and watch it too. And check back for a video next week on Saturday because I will recap everything that happens in episode two for you guys again so you know so you're all caught up and you caught all the little clues in it for next week's episode. And everything's gonna be connected. Let me know down in the comments if I should make that murder board thing that they do in the TV shows on a cork board. I'm thinking about it. it seems like a fun project. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you watch Dirk Gently. I love it. You should love it too. It's a really cool show. So I will see you guys in my next video which should be up very soon so I'll see you guys then okay bye so yes everything is connected